Alright, up to this point we've been dealing with Lewis structures. But the problem with the Lewis structure is that it doesn't show the geometry of a molecule, the actual 3D representation of a molecule in space. So, to deal with the molecular geometry, what you need to do is figure out the angles involved in the molecule. What I mean by this is let's take CO2 The molecular geometry in this molecule, as you can see, it's you take the central carbon and figure out the connected atoms. So the number of connected atoms, this oxygen and this oxygen, are both connected to the central carbon. I drew it linear because the oxygens like to stay as far from each other as possible. They have electrons on them which repel each other. So in space, when they're as far apart from each other as possible, that is the least amount of energy, meaning it's the stablest state possible. So, in this molecule, you have a 180 degree bond angle, just a straight line. And it's linear. So let's try a different molecule. Let's try there. You have a central boron with three fluorine atoms on the outside. I drew it like this because all the fluorines are equally but as far apart from each other as possible. So in this kind of molecule, you have a 120 degree bond angle and the shape trigonal planar. Now how do I know this? Well, all the fluorines are as far from each other as possible, so we have a 360 degree circle divided by 3 is 120. Trigonal planar, you're just going to have to memorize it. Now let's try a different molecule, um, one of the more common ones. There you go. Water. Most basic element. Now what are we looking at here? We are looking at a central oxygen with two hydrogens, two connected atoms to it, and two pairs of lone electrons. So we have four connected groups to this oxygen. We have two electrons groups and two hydrogen groups. Now you could take 360 divided by 4, which would be 109.5. But this is not the case. These electrons, whenever you have a lone pair of electrons, such as up there, you're going to have more space taken up by them. Electrons really don't like to be next to each other. The hydrogens don't also like to be next to each other, but not to the same degree as these lone pair of electrons. So, in this case, these electrons are going to repel each other and want just a little more room for themselves. So, in this case, it's just a little slightly less than 109.5 degree angle between these four connected uh, molecules, like the two hydrogens and the two electrons. So, in this case, we call it a bent molecule. Now let's give a couple other examples. Let's see, let's do another molecule. Alright, what have I drawn out here? Well, you have the central carbon with four hydrogens around it. This molecule, the way it's drawn, when you have a solid line, it's a covalent bond, it means it's on the same plane. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen are both on the same plane. When you have a filled in triangle coming out from the central carbon, like it drawn, it means that this hydrogen is coming out of the page towards you, trying to represent a 3D picture two dimensionally. So this hydrogen is popping out of the page towards us. And when you have a dashed line, it means that it's going down into the page, down away from us. So these two hydrogens are on the same plane. This one is coming out towards us and this one is going down into the page. So how we have it 
we have 109.5, like we saw before with water, except this time all four groups, all four hydrogens are equally spaced. There are no lone pair of electrons. So, in this case, 109.5 is our angle that we're going to work with. And, this is called a tetrahedral shape, or a tetrahedral molecule. Let's try another one. Let's do... There we go. Let's try this shape out. Let's see what we're looking at. We're dealing with one hydrogen that's on the same plane of the page, one that's coming out, and one that's going in. So we have three that are equally spaced, as far away from each other as possible, and now we're dealing with a lone pair. Well, we've already seen the example with water. So this pair of electrons is going to push these hydrogens just a little further. So the bond angle between these three hydrogens is going to be 109.5, but just a little less because of this lone pair of electrons. Over here, all four groups are the same, so the spacing between them, the bond angle between these, those, those, and those are all the same. In this case, this lone pair of electrons is going to push everybody just a little closer together, so the bond angle between these are just a little less, 109.5 and the shape that we're going to be dealing with is going to be called trigonal pyramidal and the way they calculate this is this nitrogen will look like a pyramid with all three hydrogens below it this lone pair of electrons isn't depicted in the 3D representation those are just placeholders but when you have the three hydrogens, it kind of forms a pyramid, so that's where that comes from. And trigonal, three, three hydrogens, trigonal pyramidal. So now let's try another trigonal, but a bipyramidal. Oh, let me try this again. Just so we have room. Alright, so in this example, you have phosphorus, which can have more than four bonds to it. Nitrogen has four bonds, carbon has four bonds. In this case, we have five. There are some exceptions to that rule. We're not going to go into that right now. So, what we're dealing with, we have our central phosphorus with two borons. We're going to have one that goes up, one that goes down. Bromine, sorry. One that goes up, one that goes down. These are in the same plane. Now, if you can imagine, we have a separate plane. This will be the Y, and this will be the, Z, the X axis. These bromines right here are on the Y axis. All three of these are going to be on the X. These two on the Y, these on the X. So, the angle between these three are going to be 120. The angle between these two are going to be 180. So in this case, in the 3D representation, if you draw a line from those to those all the way to there, it kind of forms a pyramid. In the same way with the other side, if you draw just an imaginary line from this bromine to this bromine, to that one and to that one, you'll form two pyramids. So it's called trigonal bipyramidal. So in this case, we have 120 degrees, and then the angle from this bromine, or this bromine, to the central ones is going to be a right angle. So it'll be 90 degrees. So 120 degrees between these three, and 90 degrees between that one, the one that's kind of going into the page, and the one that's coming out. Finally, Let's do one more example, just because these are the common ones. 
This will be the last example. Let's try sulfur with a whole bunch of bromines again. All right, so what are we dealing with? Again, sulfur can have more than one connectivity. It all depends. But in this case, we're not going to worry about it. We have four bromines that are on the x-axis. If you imagine that these are just placed on the same plane, these two coming out, these two going into the page, and then you have two bromines, one coming out and one going down. So these two are on the same plane, and these four are on the same plane. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with hundred and eighty degrees between these two. We have ninety degrees between these two because this one's on the Y. These are on the X axis. So we have ninety degrees between the top and the bottom and these central ones. hundred and eighty degrees between these two. And then in between the X axis bromines we have right angles because You have 360 degrees divided by 4 because all four of these bromines are in the same plane, 90 degrees. In this case, all of the bromines are as far apart from each other as they can be and they are satisfied with how they are, giving it the lowest energy, the most stable state that they can be. This is called octahedral. And that'll do it with molecular geometry.